Yo, what's up guys? I'm coming back to you with another Serum Sound Design tutorial. And this time we're going to be doing a preset in the style of um, AT Aliens or G-Rex or Tynan or any of those guys are doing kind of experimental bass stuff. It's going to be kind of like a wubby dubstep sound, but it has a real cool timbre and kind of texture to it, which makes it kind of cool. You can use it as a standalone uh, during your drop, or you can use it as like a fill, whatever you want to do with it. And of course, I'm going to include a free download in the description. So you can go ahead and just get right to using this. And it also comes with an Ableton rack too, which I added, which just kind of made the sound sound a little bit better. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and get right into it and show you the sound real quick before we get started. <laughs> Like I said, real cool sound, got a cool texture to it. And then um, I think we already got our serum initialized, so I'm just going to drag this MIDI down to right here, and I'm going to pull up our serum. And uh, that is not initialized, so let me initialize that real quick. All right, starting from scratch. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go into um, Spectral, and we're going to grab Monsters 9 as our Oscillator A wavetable. And then we're going to go ahead into Oscillator B, and we're going to grab um, and we're gonna Analog, and we're going to grab Basic Shapes. And then we're going to do the voices on these bad boys real quick. Um, on our first oscillator, on oscillator A, we're going to turn it up to five voices. On oscillator B, we're going to turn it up to three. We want to keep it relatively low on these because we want to be responsible and not have our um, bass sound like shit in mono. So we want to go easy on the voices. And we're going to go ahead and turn down the level on both of these because we're going to end up automating and FMing later anyway. So let's just get that out of the way. And the next step is let's get our um, LFOs done. So our first LFO is going to be our um, Dynamics LFO. I'm going to reiterate this over and over again. This is just my um, way of keeping it organized when I work in Serum. And um, our second, and we're going to, sorry, we're just going to do like a dubstep type whoop kind of shape just like this. Nothing special, nothing crazy. Don't got to get crazy with it. Just drag, done. Um, oscillator, or sorry, not Oscillator, but LFO 2 is going to be our timbre um LFO, which is going to control everything that has to do with the quality or like texture of the sound. And we're going to leave that as is actually. We're just going to um, move on and let's just start with automating. Let's just get this done. Knock it out. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our LFO one, throw it on our level, have it at about like 80. So, I mean, it's, it's about good. And then we're going to go ahead and grab um, our oscillator or sorry, I keep on saying oscillator, but it's our LFO. Um, I'm just going to play the sound for you real quick so you can just see where, what it sounds like to start with. I mean, it's nothing special. Like I said, nothing crazy. Kind of sounds like some keys. Like if you play that in a chord, they could probably actually sound kind of decent, but not at all what we're going for today. First thing that we're going to start by doing is just creating some movement in the sound. And we're going to take this wavetable position and we're going to turn it up to like 99. Just right there, 99. And then we're going to take our LFO2, which is our timbre LFO, and we're going to automate this guy up like uh, the 27 cents. And then we're just going to play it real quick. Create some movement in the sound, get something that kind of sounds kind of growly, um, good start. And then we're going to take our LFO1, and um, yeah, we already did that, never mind, just kidding. And then what we're going to do from here is let's just get our filter done, and we're going to go ahead and go down to miscellaneous, and we're going to grab... Um, what was it? Band reject. Yep, band reject. We're gonna turn that all the our, our um uh cutoff knob all the way down. And we're gonna go attach our LFO one to our cutoff, and then we're gonna go ahead and attach our LFO one to our drive as well. Except automate this guy up only fifty percent. And then from here, what we're gonna do is let's just get our FMing done. So we're gonna FM from B, and we're gonna crank this guy up to about sixty. Sixty is where I thought it sounded good. And these numbers where I'm getting them from, them from is just me like spamming the space bar, um, turning the knobs, just finding where it kind of sits right for my taste. And that's really what you should be doing. You should really just be kind of like playing around and getting like kind of groovy with Serum and just doing weird stuff. Because I think that's where like the best sound design really comes from. Or like, at least for me, my best sounds come from doing that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a little bit more. Let's like play the sound real quick for you. Good stuff. We're getting somewhere. It's sounding like, all right, it's not, it's, it's, we're getting like a cooler sound, thicker. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a little bit more movement by turning on bed minus on this guy. And we're going to turn it up to like 50. And then what I did, which I like normally don't do, because I usually keep things organized by having these LFOs control two separate things. 
is I actually took my dynamic knob and I put it on um, my bend minus, which I normally wouldn't do, but you know what? It sounded good, so I rolled with it and um, kind of created just a little bit more movement in the sound, which I kind of liked, a little bit more tone. And then from here, we're just going to do the um, effects real quick. Um, first thing I went with was my dialed one and distortion. Dialed one is sick. It's my favorite distortion. It just makes stuff sound real nasty. And we're going to go ahead and crank this guy up to like, I think like 75 or so. It doesn't really matter too much. It's not like it's, as long as it's not super low. And then uh, after that, we're going to go out into our compressor. And then we're going to go ahead and turn it to multiband mode. And we're going to automate this guy as well. And only like, I think like 70% or so. That's about good. Not too crazy. And um, this the reason that we use the multiband mode is we're just kind of adding more highs back to the sound. Um, it can get a little messy though if you do too much. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually tame that back by going into our filters. And I think I grabbed one of the ones under multi. I went with uh, low pass, high pass 24. And then I went and I took our dynamics mod knob and put it on the cutoff. And uh, what did I do? Yeah, I, I automated that guy 100%. And then I automated the um, drive as well with our dynamics knob or our dynamics LFO per se. Oh, geez, this is not working with me today. There we go. Maybe like 53% or something. Whatever. All right. We got kind of a cool sound, but it wasn't good enough for me. We need to push this guy a little bit further and get a little cooler tone out of it and make it sweeter. And then what we're going to do first is we're going to grab our erosion. Oh, sorry. I'm in plugins. I need auto effects. There we go. Erosion throw our erosion on there erosion is awesome it's just good for like filling out sounds and making them thick and beefy and i think i put the frequency to about 395 hertz turn width up to like uh i think like i don't remember what was the width at let me check uh wrote it down somewhere oh yeah width was like at 87 or so that's where like i kind of found the sweet spot of where i liked it where it wasn't too much and then amount was up to like 60, I believe. Something like that. I mean, it doesn't really matter that much at this point. And, um, see, we're just adding more highs back to the sound. Um, just kind of like filling that out a little bit. And then, um, what I actually did is I went back and I put an auto filter. And the reason that I put it here was just to kind of tame those highs back a little bit because it was too much for me. And, um, I put it to multi band mode or not multi band to, um, bandpass mode um bandpass is real sick you should play around with it because it kind of adds this um whippy type sound to it and kind of affects the texture of the sound and it's just a really cool filter to play around with i would highly recommend um, playing around with this guy and i went ahead and turned up the amount uh, all the way went to the rate make sure that it's on one four for whatever you want to do i mean you can do anything with this and you can change up um the lfo rate so you can make different patterns with it get groovy with it have some fun pretty much there almost there but the last thing that i kind of did it's real short i just put on a little saturator just to beef it up a little bit i think i only put it up like a little bit like this much and i called it good and there you go there's your at aliens type base and um that's about it. Of course, I put the free download in the description. I'll include the Ableton rack so you can get right to using this sound. Hopefully, you learned something today from me. And